This episode, we travel from a cow in on the Eyre Peninsula around to Port Broughton on the beginning of the York Peninsula in South Australia. Hello and welcome to another episode. Uh, welcome back to Aussie Encounters. Or if you haven't been here before, welcome to our channel. We have moved on and we have left the Eyre Peninsula after, I don't know, four months? Yeah, Five about four months. months. Something like yeah. that. So, November last year, November 23, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So now we've uh, started the York Peninsula. Um, we've been here for... Ooh, five days or something but yeah. I actually came down with a little bug so I haven't been able to do anything for that time so first day able to actually do something hallelujah sick of that caravan <laughs> uh, so we're going to show you we're actually in Port Broughton at the moment it's also probably one of the better mm -hmm. days too to get out where the wind's not howling yeah that's right and uh, I think tomorrow onwards or maybe Wednesday onwards uh, it's going to be like 36 up to 40 degrees or something so hot yeah Been damn hot <laughs> so well, we've got uh this today this opportunity we get, we'll quickly show you around port broad and then we're going to take a bit of a drive around to see what we can find um so we're actually just had some lunch and um sitting at the very 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 well kept for sure absolutely uh, well mean, manicured <clears throat> lawns and facilities look at the grassed area just near the uh the pier um, or the jetty which really you really want to call. long jetty beautiful There's public toilets just there definitely a place to be if you're a fisherman if you've got a boat so it's it's well protected uh, arm mm. this is the entrance to go out to head out into the open water as well so um seems to be a lot of people fish here and um if we had a boat, we'd probably be doing the same thing. <laughs> probably. <laughs> All right, so we've uh, come around to the Port Broughton boat ramp just here. So there's a, um, a channel that goes out there because otherwise the water is fairly shallow here. Oh, hello, random dog. <laughs> just coming around with a camera now. That's the... Uh, the entrance to the little arm here at Port Broughton that's heading out to the open water. Obviously there is a <coughs> follow the channel markers. Mm-hmm. Right. So the only sort of sandy beach around here is just here. Um, I'm assuming that they may have artificially put that sand there because it doesn't appear to be anywhere else around here. It's certainly not on the um, the, <coughs> the foreshore area, is it? No, no. Back up that way. Yeah, back up that way. It's um, sort of like Coffin Bay was with the sort of the muddy mm. ground. Um, yeah. So anyway, we'll. Um, Go up a bit further and show you more around town. So we're uh, just heading down to the shopping centre and there's some beautiful old house, original houses here. Amongst the newer ones. And you are, I mean, that looks 70s, but um, yeah. The big old pub here on the corner. Pub. We'll probably go to the pub Wednesday for uh, Mr. Chris's birthday. Uh -huh. <coughs> and we just went here to beach the front beach deli. front deli for their hamburgers we can highly recommend. It was fantabulous. It's not an overly big town, but there is quite a lot here, really. Um, yeah, there's a couple of, uh, like, there's uh, another takeaway store across the road, post office. Nice bakery up the side street, back the other yeah, street. Yeah, back the other way. IGA up to the right. If you have a boat, there is a uh, marine... Marine centre there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. 
Oh, and the fuel here, and let's see if it's still the same price, but it was really cheap the other day compared to, yeah, $1.79. That's where we go, and we've got to fill up. Yes. So, yeah, we'll go and do that now, so we can go elsewhere. There's the hospital. <coughs> Skate park. All right. We'll go stop off. Premium's only $1.96. Ooh, get some fuel and um, get back to you. All right, we have filled up. Very lovely lady at the uh, service station. And uh, this is the rest of the town. So we've got IGA there, RSL, hardware, and pretty much that's all the shopping centre for Port Broughton. Bowling club down to the left. Ah, uh, yeah, the bowling that's club. There's the there. heritage centre just here on the left. Mm. Oh, yeah, there's a um, museum. Some beautiful houses. I love this house here. Oh, the, yeah, look at that. The full veranda just yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. And you got the school. Cool. And that's it. So, yeah, we'll go out the uh, out the road now. We think we might head to Snowtown. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, they have some silo art there that I've seen and some other things. So we will see if there's anything on the way. We'll show you, otherwise we'll see you in Snowtown. Okay, so on the way to Snowtown, we have come to a tiny little town called Butte and there is silo art here. So I'm a sucker for any street art, silo art, anything like that. So had to stop. And it's certainly worthwhile. Have a look at this. It's bloody magnificent. I tell you what, there's some very, very talented artists out there. To be able to do that on that scale, that size, that's just ridiculous. Amazing. Anyway, um, yeah, had to stop. Um, we'll keep going to Snowtown. Oh, flies. And uh, see the silo out there. So we're doing a silo art trail at the moment. <laughs> So we're just on our way to Snowtown and um, just thought I'd show the uh, the wind farm up on the hill because I believe in Snowtown itself there is actually one of the blades that's off one of those and I'll just um, show the size of it once we get there but just thought uh, good spot for them it's windy here <laughs> uh, yeah we'll show you the blade shortly Okay, so we've made it to Snowtown and here is the next lot of silo art. So look from this side first. We've got some old harvesting machine here. Again, artwork is so good. That's brilliant. Just the hairs on his mo and eyebrows. That's crazy. Fabulous. I'm not sure if there's any other picture on the other side. More of the building. And, oh, we've got a football player. There. Oh, and someone up the top there. There we go. Now the sign actually 
does say who these people are so we'll just have a quick read oh. okay. all right so we have jenny cox 25 years service in the ambulance john hansen 30 years service country fire service Bernie Altman playing netball and Simon McCormick 300 games of A grade huh that's really really nice all right next on to the big blade all right so we have made it to the big blade now um put, put it in perspective have a look behind me <laughs> that is really really long <laughs> so there's an information board here that says they're a hundred meters long so that's kind of crazy some information board just here that you can come and read when you hear and now Chris is going to take a photo with me standing under this gigantic blade. We'll get into the shadow of it. <laughs> wow. Alrighty. Uh, I'm not sure where we're going to next, but um, we'll find out. Between... August 1992 and May 1999 unfortunately there were some bodies the murders occurred not there was only one here in Snowtown um, 11 others were unfortunately murdered in Adelaide and their bodies was disposed disposed of in barrels here in Snowtown in an old bank um, which had a, still had its vault at the back. They were put in barrels and put in a the bank. There has been a, a movie made about this, um, but right across the road, in that building just there, the non-assuming building here, is the infamous bank. Obviously, the, uh, the, the present owners, it's owned privately now. It was sold a number of years ago. They've um, taken the signage down because it did create a bit of uh, macabre interest. I suppose that's why we're here, I suppose, to have a look at it. Um, yeah, but that's the infamous bank where the bodies were eventually discovered inside barrels in the old bank vault here in Snowtown. So, um, yes, and it, the uh, there was actually two people that were um, the murderers. Um, Bunting actually received 11 life sentences, it says here, without parole. And Wagner, 10 life sentences without parole. And there was actually a third person, Vlas Vlasikas, um, who got four life sentences with a 26 year non-parole period because he assisted them to dispose of the bodies, he, he apparently. He wasn't involved in the murders, he yeah. involved in the disposal so, of mm. Probably not what the town likes to be known for. No. Um, they did, um, not long after this happened, they uh, were talking about actually changing it to the name of the town because of the bad publicity it received uh, in the media. Mm. Um, they were thinking about changing the name to Rosetown, and that that didn't happen. But yeah. uh, we'll keep wondering and see what else we can find for you. Yeah, okay. I heard there might be a monster up the road, so a let's monster? go and see oh, if we can find yes. a monster. The All right. infamous monster. We'll, yes. uh, we're on the monster hunt. All okay. right, let's go see if we can find it. All righty. Bye. Well. We found the uh, monster. Tracy's walked out to feed it, so hopefully he doesn't bite her. He's a big bugger. All right, so I'm going to the next place now where the monster is. 
Um, so we're actually in a little town called Lockheel and there's a lake called Lake Bumbunga. So I'm trying to work out which way to go. Okay, this way I believe. And we actually have found Lockheel, the Lockheel Ness monster. So, so the lake is actually dried up, so it's a pink lake. Might get Chris to put the drone up to see if we can see the lovely pink. But out here is Lucky, or Lucky all they call him. So, this will be my first time actually walking on a salt lake. And here we thought pink salt was Himalayan. <laughs> we'll see if it actually looks pink close up. It does. Ah. Oh, there's a viewing platform over there. Wow. That's probably really bright on the uh, camera. <laughs> That's really hard. I know where, know where they make those um, salt lamps from. Huh. This is really cool. Alright, well, I'll stop filming now and I'll um, start again when I get to Lockheel. So we're getting closer to Lockheel now. And uh, walking on this salt is really weird. It's um, it's actually slightly wet on top, on the surface, but it's, oi, <laughs> wind. Um, yeah, it's the strangest thing I've ever walked on. It's crazy. Well, anyway, he, uh, he looks a bit vicious, this locking up. That looks like a gigantic eel and I have a fear of eels. Oh my god. Oh, don't like you. Hello. That's pretty cool though. So Chris is back there. He was going to put the um, gigantic lens on the camera and see if you can take a photo of me because his ankle's still not quite right to walk on this sort of surface so I'll put the camera down for a second and see I'll smile and see if he actually <laughs> gets me in a photo back in a sec all right so not sure if Chris actually had the camera ready or had it out but I actually just picked up some of the salt it is like the pink salt that you use on your dinner table. That's cool. <laughs> I knew what it existed and what it was, but just actually seeing it in person, it's, it's very different. Anyway, I head back to the car. We have no idea where else we're going today. We're just having fun exploring, being out and about again. After being stuck in the van for so many days, we were going stir crazy. So this is fantastic. All right, we'll see you don't know where.